One of our displays at the Creation Evidence Museum challenges the evolutionary interpretation of the appearance of man in the fossil record. It is our position that man did not evolve from an ape-like creature or any other lower life form. In fact, biologists have demonstrated again and again that every living thing was designed to fill a specific purpose and place in the creation and it reproduces only after its kind. Behind me is the icon of evolutionary development, suggesting that from a chimpanzee-like creature in the dim distant past, through progressive evolutionary Darwinian evolutionary stages, ultimately man appeared in the fashion that we can recognize in the fossil record. However, it probably will come as a surprise to many in the audience that leading evolutionary scholars have admitted certain things that actually question the icon, the descent of man, the evolutionary progression as suggested by Darwin and held by this entire academic generation. For instance, one of the leading evolutionary scholars of a few decades ago, Dr. Pilbeam, published in American Scientist the following statement. Perhaps generations of students of human evolution, including myself, have been flailing about in the dark that our database is too sparse, too slippery, for it to be able to mold our theories. Rather, the theories are more statements about us and ideology than about the past. Paleoanthropology reveals more about how humans view themselves than it does about how humans came about. That is shocking to those who are committed to evolutionary theory and to students who really want to know the facts. In fact, published in Nature magazine, the world's most prestigious scientific journal, Dr. Halstead, an evolutionist himself, stated, there are no actual fossils directly antecedent to man. That's surprising. Here we have the evolutionary display used hundreds of thousands of times in publications worldwide, taking it for granted that evolution has taken place. Yet the real data show that only microevolution has taken place. That is, evolution that occurs within genetic boundaries using the genetic information that is already in place. That's microevolution. But the ideology of evolutionary development suggests that perhaps over long periods of time, you can have an accretion of information, even though it has never been demonstrated in the laboratory, after billions of dollars have been spent worldwide over long decades of time, there never has been a demonstration that you can increase the genetic information. You can only isolate it in specific areas. So the real truth is there are no actual fossils directly antecedent to man. So let's sum this up. As we approach the episodes having to do with the appearance of man in the fossil record, let me show you what has been admitted in major texts having to do with the subject. Six evolutionists wrote, evidence from this period is sparse and controversial. Scientific American published, but with so little evidence to go on, the origin of our genus has remained as mysterious as ever. New scientists admitted, we thought we had just about nailed human evolution. Now everything is up for grabs again. A George Washington University paleoanthropologist stated, the origin of our own genus remains unclear. So at the Creation Evidence Museum, we have a major display showing where man really did appear in the fossil record, and it brings into serious question the evolutionary interpretation of man having evolved from lower life forms.